I want to know, what is your answer uh, to young people for some of the really big uh, uh, problems facing humanity, like the you know, climate catastrophe, like economic crisis, like the precarious job market? Because they just don't, like you talk all this much about uh, individual responsibility. Most of us are never going to be able to afford uh, to have all of these assets to have responsibility over. So what is your advice beyond banal comments like clean your room? Hello there, it's Hebib. Let's respond to this lady by delving into Chapter 6 of Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life. Peterson talks about murderers, individual criminals, and serial killers who believe that the world is not worth fighting for, only worth destroying. For them, life's experiences are inadequate and evil, so they reject everything. One example he gives is Karl Panzam, one of the most vengeful murderers of the 20th century, who had a horrible childhood filled with violence and betrayal. But we can't just say, well, they had a tough childhood, so they became killers. It's not that simple and naive. Peterson discusses cases where people had even tougher and more aggressive childhoods, but turned their lives around and found happiness. You know, you see these mass shootings all the time and everyone does the same thing. Oh, how did that happen? Why did that happen? How can it be this way? It's like, well, why don't you read what they said about why they did it? And just assume that that's the reason. And if you go, if you go, oh, well, the Columbine kids, Oh yeah, it was like, oh, they must have been bullied. Oh yes, because, you know, the natural response of anyone who's been bullied is to go arm yourself to the teeth to plot the destruction of the entire city, I think it was of Detroit, to line your entire high school avenue with bombs and then to go and shoot your classmates. That's what happens when you're bullied. It's like, no, that, that's not what happens when you're bullied. That's a stupid explanation. It's shallow beyond belief. And it, and it really emerges only because people don't want to contend with the real issue. Peterson believes the answer is all about resentment. Contempt plays a crucial role in human motivation. Listening to your contempt is probably the best thing you can do. It's an excellent teacher. Karl Pansam did not, but Alexander Solzhenitsyn listened to his contempt and change his own world. First, you have to acknowledge that the contempt exists within you, then recognize the fantasies it generates, and finally, find a way out of it. Now, imagine your life isn't going well. There could be two reasons. First, there might be something wrong with the world, and you're just caught up in it. Second, maybe you are lucky enough, and there's something wrong with you, and you can fix it right now. If your life isn't going the way it is, you know, you can find someone else to blame, which is pretty convenient for you and also relatively easy. Or you could think, okay, I don't like life. I don't like the way my life is unfolding. Um, maybe I don't like life in general because it's tragic and, and tainted with evil. How do I know if my judgment is accurate? And the question is, well, have I really done everything I possibly could to set my life straight? Because maybe I shouldn't be judging it its quality, or the quality of life itself, or being itself, for that matter, if I haven't done everything I possibly could to set my life straight. Now let's dive into the philosophy behind the concept of set up and clean your room. Here's the idea in simpler terms. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by all the problems and challenges in the world, start with something you have control over, your immediate surroundings. It's about taking small, manageable steps to make things better. And, you know, I might say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. And I would say, start where you can start. You know, if, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. Now, I often tell people too, fix the things you repeat every day, because people tend to think of those as trivial, right? You get up, you brush your teeth, you, do, you have your breakfast, you know, you, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, th those probably constitute 50% of your life. And people think, well, they're mundane, I don't need to pay attention to them. It's like, no, no, that's exactly wrong. The things you do every day, 
Those are the most important things you do. But I would say that's where, where people should start. You start small. It's not small. You think it's small. It's not small. I had a girl come up to me last night at the end of my talk, and this happens all the time. She said, I started cleaning up my room last year and it completely changed my life. She said, your room is an externalization of your mind. And that's right. That's exactly true. To the degree that you're in your room, the room is you. In the final part of this video, I want to tell you, my young friends, to clean up your life. Blaming others is the easiest thing to do when things aren't going well, but it doesn't help. It's like digging holes within holes and you'll end up getting lost. Consider your circumstances and start with small changes. Ask yourself if you have habits that are harming your health. Are you truly taking responsibility for your actions? Are you blaming capitalism or the radical left too much? Remember, you shouldn't try to fix the world until you've sorted out your own experiences. If you can't bring peace to your own life, how can you expect to make a positive impact on a larger scale? So stop blaming others and take responsibility to find meaning in your life, my friends. One of the things you could do for young people that no one's doing is to talk to them about responsibility. Because everyone talks to young people about rights. It's like, we need our rights. It's like, oh God, how many rights do you need? You know, really, like you have more privileges than any people who've ever lived anywhere. Well, it's so dull to hear, it's so dull, it's so pathetic and, and uh, what would you call it? It's so demeaning that you have to be protected and have your rights. It's like I said, there's a huge marketplace for responsibility. That's what you want to talk to young people about. It's like, get your act together and do something worthwhile with your life. For the first time in my entire adult life, the conservatives actually have something to sell young people, right? They can sell them responsibility. It's like, well, why? Because that's where me life has meaning with responsibility. The more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has. And the, the higher degree of responsibility that you agree voluntarily to try to bear, the richer your life will be. I've tried to cover some key points from this chapter, but please feel free to correct me and leave comments. Let's have an engaging chat together. Stay safe, my friends.